In today's video, we're going to look at some of the best international summer research programs for students all around the world, what they have to offer, how much do they actually cost, and are they really worth it? The first one on our list is one of the most popular programs in the world. It's YYGS, which is the Yale Young Global Scholars Program. And this is an interdisciplinary two-week program that Yale offers to students all around the world. And if it's not obvious from the name itself, it is by Yale University, one of the Ivy Leagues, so it carries a very big name. Now, students have the opportunity to choose a STEM field, social science, humanities, art. There are a variety of options to choose from, and you can do things all the way from taking classes, being involved in group projects, and basically taking the whole idea league experience for two whole weeks. There are three main eligibility requirements that you need to be aware of. One, you need to be at least 16 years of age when you're applying. Second, you can be either in grade 10 or 11 of high school at the time of application. And third, you have to be a first time applicant, which means that if you've applied before and you've gotten in, you can't do this program again. Now, because this is an Ivy League summer research program, their application process is extremely intensive, which means that you guys will need to write your essays. The essay is a 400 word essay and one 200 word essay. There is an activities list that you'll need to submit. In addition to that, your school transcripts, one letter of recommendation, and the most important thing is a $75 non-refundable fee at the time of application. Now, this is the time that you guys will probably close your ears or probably skip the video because nobody likes to hear that this program is actually paid. It's not free. Let's say you actually get into the YYGS program and you choose the on-campus version, which is you being on the Yale University campus, the program itself will cost you $6,250 for two weeks. This does include tuition fee, your accommodation, living expenses, food, everything, but it's not free. And you can apply for financial aid. There is a separate application process, but there's no guarantee that you'll actually get it. Second one on our list is the Harvard Pre-College Program. Now, this is everybody's favorite university, the top Ivy League. Everybody wants to go to Harvard, be at Harvard, have Harvard attached to their name in some way or another. If you fall into that whole, you know, craze, of students, I am too, uh, this might be a good program for you. Now, this is a two-week on-campus live in-person program. It's not online where you'll get to be on the Harvard campus taking classes, interacting with professors, doing assignments, getting the whole pre-college feel of what a Harvard Ivy League education would look like. The only downside to this particular program that I found is that any class that you take for two weeks doesn't carry any credits to your college level education, which means that you're truly just there for the experience, you're not getting any transcripts, and that uh, coursework that you're taking wouldn't really translate into anything uh, when you start your undergrad um, in college. Now, this is an in-person program, so there is an application fee of $75 associated with it. And if you get selected, you can expect to pay $5,300 for the two-week program. Now, this would include everything, your tuition fee, living expenses, but I don't think it includes the travel. So you may have to like um, add on those costs in addition to wherever you know you're flying from. Number three on the list is Stanford's pre-college summer institute. We're leaving the east coast behind and moving all the way to the other side, California, the Silicon Valley. But wait, before you guys start imagining, this is an online two-week summer program. And if you are ready for a full-fledged online virtual experience where you get no credits and you're okay paying $3,000, this program is for you. <laughs> <laughs> On a serious note, for this two-week program, you'll be able to select courses all the way ranging from STEM, computer science, mathematics, data analytics, social science, humanities. You do get to learn a lot, but students are expected to pay a $50 application fee and anyone between grades 8 and 11 are eligible to apply from all over the world. Number four on our list are the Oxbridge Academic Programs. Now, this one was a really unique find because honestly I hadn't heard of it before but something that I really liked about this particular program is that they offer students the option to choose from where they physically want to be for the research program so you can choose places like Europe the US and you have that option available you also have the option to choose whether you want it to be for two weeks four weeks or six weeks students all the way from grades 8 to 12 are eligible to apply. Now there is a $75 application fee that you have to submit, but at the time of submitting your application, you'll be able to put in your preference on whether you want to study in New York, Barcelona, Paris. So that's pretty cool. And the tuition fee that you're looking at for this program can reach anywhere between five to $12,000, depending on the location that you choose 
and the duration that you choose. Obviously, if someone is choosing six weeks, that'll be a little more on the expensive side. Number five on our list is the best one out of all of these because students finally don't have to pay anything if they get accepted into this program. This is the Research Science Institute by MIT. Now, this program is extremely competitive. Thousands of students apply each year and only 100 students get selected. If you're selected, you can choose what um, interest you want to go into, whether it's STEM or non-STEM, and you pursue group projects, take courses, and be involved on campus, on MIT's actual campus in Cambridge. Now, since we're talking about MIT, and this is a fully funded program, which means that if you get selected, you will not be paying a penny out of your pocket. Their application program and their eligibility requirements are so, so, so rigorous. Now, students that are in grade 11 are eligible to apply to this program and it is a huge no for anyone who is in grade 12. So this is very restrictive to, you know, only certain members of high school that can apply, but it is a very competitive and extremely prestigious program if you guys can get in. So that's gonna conclude the list for this video. I know that there are many more international programs out there. So here is a screenshot of a few more that you guys can apply to. But for this first um, international summer program video, I decided to keep the top five, which I thought were really attractive for students. And if you're watching till this point, you probably would have understood three main things. These programs are extremely costly, keeping MIT aside, not just the fact uh, that they have thousands of dollars in tuition fee, but also the fact that students are expected to pay 50 to $100 just to submit your application. And if you're applying to, you know, maybe four of these out of uh, the ones that I mentioned, you're looking at 300 to $400 just in application fee. That is a lot just for a two or four week summer program. The second point is that these programs are highly competitive. Now they expect students to have a resume activity list and write these essays to stand out, which means that they already expect you to have a well-versed academic and extracurricular profile. And the hard truth is that even though thousands of students apply, these programs generally have a cap of 50 to 100 students every year. So maybe three to 5% of students get accepted, what about the rest? Like, what are the other high school students supposed to do? And not to forget the part that most of these programs do not allow grade 12, gap year students, or even undergraduate students to apply. So it's really focused on specific grade students that can actually apply and get selected for these programs, which makes it really difficult for everybody else to improve their profile. Now, the third point, and this is a bit controversial, but it's just my personal opinion take, so don't come at me. But I honestly feel that a lot of these programs are just a big cash grab. Now, I know that Colleges like Yale and Harvard advertise these summers, summer programs, but if you kind of take a step back and not fantasize over the fact that it's an Ivy League international summer program, at the end of the day, it's a college giving you a two-week, maybe even virtual program and asking you as a high school student for thousands of dollars. You're not even getting a college credit. There's no guarantee that after you complete the summer program, you'll get admission into their college or even another Ivy League. It's just an activity that you're spending thousands of dollars on. I feel like if the same program was maybe for a few months, it would be more valuable for high school students. So enough of all of the moping and, you know, bringing you guys down because those were just some of my opinions with the programs that I shared. Now, I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. I do have an interesting news to share for all of the students, whether you're in high school, maybe not in high school, a gap year student, undergrad, master's, whatever you may be. There is a research boot camp that has been launched by Incognito Blueprints. Now, this is for high school students, gap year students, undergrads, or basically anyone who wants to get involved and start their path and learn about research. And the best part is it is a two month summer program, which is kind of hybrid live. You'll be divided into different groups of two to five people and you'll be given individual projects, not things that you've just simply seen online and you know, we're making you redo them. These projects will be determined based on one of the three categories that you choose from STEM, computer science or data analytics or non-STEM or case studies. And I'm so excited to finally share this with you guys. 
the enrollment is already open and it'll probably stay open sometime till the beginning of May, which is when we'll probably close it. We have loads of students that have already enrolled. So I'm going to leave a link to the enrollment in the description below. Go check it out. This program is beneficial for literally anyone who wants to get involved with research. You can put it on your common application. You can add it to your resume. You can add it to your LinkedIn or simply, you know, maybe just add it as a profile booster to see if this is maybe a career path that you want to explore and see if this is something that you like to do. The research bootcamp itself will start on the 28th of May and it'll run till 30th July. Now, these are very strict dates, which means that once enrollment closes, it will not open again. So I don't recommend you waiting up until May to enroll yourself. And after 30th July, I'm not sure if we will, you know, do this again, at least for this year. So I highly recommend you guys check it out. Now, for the very few of you guys that are watching till this point, I want to give a huge shout out to you guys for showing so much of love and support in the last video. And I've seen and read all of the comments and I hear you. I'm working on a video that is very elaborate and extensive timeline and walkthrough of everything that you guys as students should be doing for your 2024 applications. We'll divide it into two parts, one for undergrads and one for masters and PhDs. So you'll have a very good guide on that. And that video will drop very soon. It does take a little time to kind of, you know, structure and plan that. So uh, keep an eye out for that as well. So for today's question of the day, which is a fun and new tradition that we started from the last video, I'm going to read a comment from Kevin here who asked, what is a gap year? What's the drawback and how can you resolve or make up for it after it occur occurs? And is two years of a gap year, you know, a bad thing? So a gap year is basically any um, amount of gap in your studies. So if you're a high school student and you finished your 12th, you're maybe taking a year to apply for colleges. That can be counted as a gap year. Or if you are an undergrad student who takes a gap year to apply for master's, that's also counted as a gap year. Now, it is not the best thing to show in college applications, but in some cases, you can really, you know, make it into a strong suit. For example, I've seen students turn a gap year into a year where they're doing these long term projects. They're getting involved with um, a lot of research opportunities and they have something to show. It can be maybe work experience, internship, and those are ways that you can use the gap year uh, to support your applications. On the other hand, if you simply take the gap year just to apply to colleges, that is technically not the best way to show the use of your time. Because in a way, you're telling colleges that, look, I couldn't really handle school and college applications, so I decided to take a whole year off and just apply to colleges. So honestly, like you can do better and it shows if you're proactively involved in something else other than just college applications. So that would be my take on that. If you guys have any questions, not related to gap year, basically anything, drop those in the comments below. We are doing question of the day. So in the next video, I'll pick one of the questions from this video and answer that elaborately towards the end. Um, thanks for watching. Smash the thumbs up button um, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>